let's set up EIGRP named configurations on R1. What does this require? The removal of our old EIGRP configurations and then the creation of our new named EIGRP configurations. So let's take a look right now at show run pipe to section router EIGRP. We are currently running router EIGRP 100 for IPv4 and IPv6 router EIGRP 100. Let's not forget about our interfaces. So show run interface gigabit ethernet 1 slash 0 0.1. We can see that we have IPv6 EIGRP 100 configured under that interface and 2 slash 0 also has some summary addresses configured as well as the IPv6 EIGRP 100 command. So let's remove all of this from our devices or from R1, pardon me, interface gigabit ethernet 2 slash 0. What we'll do is we'll say no, no IPv6 EIGRP 100. Let's get rid of our summary address commands as well. And if we go to interface gigabit ethernet 1 slash 0 0.1, we're going to remove the IPv6 EIGRP 100 command from there. In global configuration mode, no router EIGRP 100 and no IPv6 router EIGRP 100. So we should be good now if we type in show run pipe to section router EIGRP, there should be nothing returned and excellent. That's what we wanted to see. So what do we do now? Well, first things first, we are going to create our named EIGRP instance. And we do that by going into global configuration mode and typing router EIGRP. And you give it the virtual instance name. So in this case, let's call it EIGRP underscore rept. And now we are in the, the main configuration area. Look at the options we have turning on or off the virtual instance, setting some commands to default. But what we're really concerned about is setting up these address families where we will do the individual conf configurations for IPv4 and IPv6. So address family, IPv4, IPv6. Let's focus on IPv4 right now. We can set up the autonomous system number, multicast, unicast. I want to focus on specifically unicast and then specify our autonomous system number, which is going to be 100. Re remember, the neighboring router is R3. It is using autonomous system 100. Therefore, we have to make sure we are using autonomous system number 100 for the address family of IPv4. So what does this mean? It means that we are creating EIGRP for IPv4 autonomous system number 100. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. Let's look at the help. Address family interface. Gets us into the address family interface configuration mode to configure the interface parameters. Topology gets us into the topology configuration mode. So we can configure those parameters that affect the topology table, variance, maximum pass, redistribution. But let's look at some of these other commands we have. EIGRP. EIGRP address family specific commands. Let's look at that. What are EIGRP address family specific commands? Oh, default route tagging, logging, neighbor changes, warnings. Ooh, router ID. So we can set up our router ID right here. And I'm just going to say 1111. Look, stub. So we can say EIGRP stub as well. And then add on all the additional options that we have. If we don't 
It's just connected in summary. So it's all underneath there for us. Let's go back. What else do we have? Maximum prefixes, metrics. So you can set the metrics. And when we say metrics, what are we referring to? The K values. So if I want to modify the K values, I do it right here. We say weights, metric weights, zero. And then look, K1, and then K2, and then K3, K4, and K5. We can set those right here. I won't do that because we typically don't mess around with our K values. Neighbor. What's the neighbor statement for? Do you remember? To form unicast neighbor adjacencies. So we configure that here in global address family configuration mode. Oh, look at this. Our favorite command, the network command, is in global address family configuration mode for IPv4 EIGRP that we're configuring here. And so I'm just going to turn it on every single interface right now. So I'm just going to type in network 0000. We should be able to form a neighbor adjacency with R3. I don't expect a neighbor adjacency with R2 because R2 is set up with a passive interface on that Ethernet segment that's connecting back around to R1. So I don't expect the neighbor adjacency there, and we don't have it. We can set up some uh, peering timers. and see what we have available to us there. So these are, this is the graceful restart when it comes to EIGRP. Uh, when restarting, there's a graceful timer that we can set up. So let's now look at the topology table configuration mode. So topology, we'll look at base here. And we can see when we're looking at the help of the topology configuration mode, auto summarization for IPv4, default information command, setting the default metric as well. You can set that there. Distance, the administrative distance, you can manipulate it. The distribute list you want to set up. There's more EIGRP specific commands, maximum paths is listed as well. Modifying metrics again, offset lists, redistribution, wow, variance. There's a lot we can set up underneath the topology configuration mode. What is the other configuration mode we talked about? Address family interface configuration mode. So address family interface configuration mode. Let's see what we have. Well. Wait a second. You have to specify the interface. So you specify the exact interface you want to configure the values on. So interface gigabit ethernet 1 slash 0 0.1. Whatever the options we have. Setting up authentication. Setting up the bandwidth percentage for EIGRP that it will utilize. Setting up the hello intervals, the hold times. If we need next hop self setup for um, a DMVPN environments, this is where we configure it. Passive interface, this is where I set the interface as passive. Passive interface. That's it. So now we've set up that interface as passive as well. We also set up summary addresses here in interface configuration mode. Oh, split horizon we can manipulate here as well in interface configuration mode, address family interface configuration mode. 